Hello. We will study about the simple epithelial tissue. Epithelial is usually to mean a covering. The term is derived from epi means upon and theli means nipple. Originally, it referred to the translucent membranous covering of the lips together with the small vascular papillae or nipples associated with it. The term acquired a broader meaning and now includes all the cellular membranes, thin layers that cover exposed surface, line cavities in the body and moreover take part in the formation of the glands. An epithelium consists of cells arranged in a single layer or in several layers. The cells are cemented together in a single layer or several layers by a small amount of densely viscous intercellular substance or matrix. Every epithelium is characterized by a close association of its constituent cells and free surface. Most epithelial cells fit together very firmly by specialized regions of their cell membranes known as desmosomes. This junctional area becomes apparent under an electron microscope. An epithelium generally rests on a thin basement membrane or basal lamina. This was formerly believed to be amorphous or a fibrous modification of the underlying connective tissue. Most epithelial membranes do not have a direct blood supply, that is, they are avascular. Therefore, the epithelial cells obtain oxygen and nourishment by tissue fluid from the capillaries in connective tissue. Tissue fluid always occur beneath the epithelial membrane. And epithelial membranes are subjected to a certain amount of wear and tear. Cells are constant, constantly lost from their exposed surfaces. To replace this, active cell division occurs in epithelium. The epithelium itself is of two types, simple epithelium and epithe compound epithelium. It is possible to classify epithelia in various ways depending on the arrangement, structure and function of constituent cells. They are segregated into two groups, simple epithelia and compound or stratified epithelia. The in simple epithelia consists of a single layer of cells, all of which rest on a basal lamina. The compound epithelia are several cells in thickness, that means they are stratified and only the basal cell layer is in contact with the basal lamina. These two groups are then further subdivided as simple epithelia is again divided into ischemas, cuboidal, columnar and pseudo stratified while compound epithelia again divided into stratified ischemas, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar and transitional. Today we will study only simple epithelium. The simple epithelium first its first branch is ischemous epithelium. The cells of this epithelium are very thin and flat like scales. Viewed from above, they appear as large and close fitting polygonal cells with clear or granular cytoplasm containing round or oval nucleus. 
the cell boundaries may be smooth giving appearance of the epithelial surface or they may be wavy the variety then being termed tessellated the thinness of the cell is evident in view they are mid portion containing nucleus forming a distinct bulge on this free surface simple squamous epithelium is not found at exposed surface or on sites where absorption and secretion are the primary activities it generally occurs where diffusion or filtration rather than protection is the basic need this epithelium lines the lung alveoli bowman's capsule and thin segment of henle's loop in kidney in these situations it forms barriers of the gas tissue fluid blood tissue fluid and tissue fluid and lymph interfaces both endothelium and mesothelium which are mesodermal derivative belong morphologically to the tessellated squamous variety the second type of simple epithelium is cuboidal epithelium in surface view the cells of this layer appear similar in shape but smaller in size than those of the previous types the cells are not like cubes but are polyhedral the term cuboidal refers to the nearly square shaped equal height and thickness of the cells in the vertical section the simple cuboidal epithelium covers the adult ovary and lines the kidney collecting duct and thyroid follicles third type of simple epithelium is columnar epithelium this resembles the cuboidal epithelium if viewed from the surface but in vertical section its constituent cells appear columnar that is much taller than wide the free cell surface is smooth and nuclei are nearly always located towards the base this fundamental plan is exhibited rarely in gallbladder the simple columnar epithelium protect wet surfaces that means lining of large ducts of glands there are three main varieties of this epithelium thus the cells may possess microvilli at the free surfaces for example absorptive cells of intestine or the cytoplasm may contain secretory granules droplets or clumps near the surface cells for example cells lining the stomach and goblet cells of the intestine or the cells may be ciliated as the lining of oviduct and parts of upper respiratory tract columnar epithelium occurs at wet surfaces in regions where the epithelial lining of an organ combines some other functions with that of limiting membrane certain tall columnar epithelial cells become specialized to serve as sensory cells as neuroepithelium for the reception of external stimuli for example gustatory cells of the taste buds the last type of simple epithelium is nothing but the pseudo stratified epithelium in this epithelium the cells are so crowded together that all do not reach the free surface although they rest on a common basal lamina the cells reaches the surface show an upper part like a columnar cell and narrow basal portion 
Some cells have a wide base and an irregular spindle shape and others are short and rounded or conical. The nucleus of each cell lies at its widest portion. This makes the tissue to appear like a stratified epithelium with nuclei at different levels. Pseudo-stratified epithelium lines most of the upper respiratory tract including trachea. Here the cells that reach the surface are either ciliated or mucus secreting goblet cells. The cells that do not reach the free surface produce new cells and when the tall cells are lost from the epithelium. Physiologically, the pseudo-stratified epithelium is adopted to serve as a resistance-limiting membrane.